Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with Alicia Finley and uh, Bill McGurn here on Potomac Watch. So let's turn to the indictment of Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, first-term mayor, indicted by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York on uh, five counts, uh, mostly for soliciting foreign donations and disguising them through straw donors in the United States, also accepting benefits like business class uh, airfare upgrades on Turkish airlines and luxury hotel rooms from Turkish friends in return. Turn, the U.S. attorney says, for favors done for Turkey and the friends in New York, uh, such as early approval of a new Turkish consulate that, when approved, would not have passed the city fire code and was approved in advance of the Turkish president's visit, <laughs> to, apparently to please the uh, local Turkish officials. Let's listen to the U.S. attorney, followed by Eric Adams. Mayor Adams engaged in a long-running conspiracy in which he solicited and knowingly accepted illegal campaign contributions from foreign donors and corporations. As we allege, Mayor Adams took these contributions even though he knew they were illegal. And even though he knew these contributions were attempts by a Turkish government official and Turkish businessmen to buy influence with him. We also allege that the mayor sought and accepted well over $100,000 in luxury travel benefits from some of the same foreign actors who arranged many of the illegal campaign contributions. We are not surprised. We expected this. This is not surprising to us at all. The actions that have unfolded over the last 10 months, the leaks, the commentary, the demonizing, this did not surprise us that we reached this day. And I ask New Yorkers to wait to hear our defense before making any judgments. Well, Bill, uh, having looked at this uh, 57 page indictment and uh, listening to Eric Adams, how serious are these charges? It's an interesting indictment because the charges are fairly narrow illegal campaign contributions and accepting business travel and hotels and so forth. That's really the heart of the charges against him. But it goes back, I think, to 2014. So it's pretty deep. Yeah, it's a decade long investigation. When he says he's not surprised, no one is surprised in New York, even though he's the first mayor ever criminally indicted. But the FBI and so forth have been snooping around for a while. A lot of his aides or associates had their phone seized like he did, I believe, have his telephone seized. So it's not been a surprise. Of course, the inflammatory thing is that it comes right as he's preparing for the primaries for re-election. The election for mayor is next year, and he's preparing for that. So you add to that, and a lot of his supporters allege that the Biden administration is going after him because he criticized the White House about immigrant policy, the illegal migrants in New York. So it's fraught with all sorts of politics all around it. Yeah, that seems to be one of the uh, lines, at least from a public rhetoric point of view, that Adams is going to pursue, that this is politically motivated. Mm -hmm. Of course, the U.S. attorney denies that. But the Democrats, uh, Alicia, are already talking, saying he should resign, New York Democrats, some of whom want to run against him and plan to in the primaries next year. Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York, can remove him. She has the authority to remove a mayor if she finds cause to do so. And she's no fan of Eric Adams. So what do you think of the charges and whether or not Adams should resign? Look, so I think you know, he deserves due process. Uh, that You have a lot of other elected officials who have stayed in office, not least Bob McNendez, the New Jersey senator who has been 
been actually indicted now twice, convicted once, and he stayed in office and fought the charges and he continues to serve, though he is not seeking re-election. So I think he has a right to uh, seek due process and go through the federal courts and defend himself. I was actually expecting more from the indictment. I think the fact that he accepted upgrades on travel, on airlines, hotel stays, all that, okay, but doesn't really necessarily show the quo. Okay, yes, he expedited a permit for the consulate, which you mentioned, but what more did he actually do for the Turkish government? So I think, you know, when there are bribery cases involved, you have to show both the quid and the quo, and in some cases, or I guess this is actually uh, hasn't been well settled in Supreme Court, whether it has to be explicit, whether you're actually doing something explicitly in return for providing an official act. And it's not clear. It's definitely not explicit in the indictment. And it's not clear that prosecutors are going to be able to prove that. And on that point, there have been lots of cases where there have been politicians who've been indicted and even convicted and then have had their convictions overturned on appeal. I think the most prominent I can remember is Robert McDonnell, the former Virginia governor who was convicted, appealed this case all the way up to the Supreme Court and had it overturned precisely because the court said the prosecutors had not proven that there was, in fact, a quid pro quo. Now, in that case, the uh, supposed benefits that were delivered to the governor were far less than some of the dollar amounts here. There's a $100,000, I think, here that uh, they said he got in some of these benefits. But Bill, I agree with Alicia in the sense that given all of the leaks and the many of the mayor's cabinet who resigned or been in recent times, who've been subpoenaed, had their phones confiscated, you would have thought that this indictment would be more far-reaching would not just be regarding the mayor, but would be include all kinds of associates. And yet it's only the mayor. Now, there are investigations that are ongoing. Perhaps there will be other new charges against others or maybe other charges against Adams. But my view is, let's let this play out. Don't run the guy out of town. Let him have due process, particularly when you've got the people who are his political opponents who are saying, who would love to be rid of of this meddlesome politician and just get rid of them. We especially don't want all of this clouding the November election. My God, you know, it might help Republicans somehow. Not that any Republican's going to win the mayor of New York, but, you know, it'll just cloud the sense of Democratic government here in the city, not very savory. Yeah, I agree. I think the narrow charges are a plus. You know, we've seen a lot of excessive charges. You mentioned Bob McDonald. The Supreme Court rebuked the prosecutor eight to nothing for the aggressive way he prosecuted our own friend, Jack Smith. So I, I um, <laughs> the special counsel in the Trump case, right? I feel more confident with narrow charges that they're not asking these ultra interpretations and so forth. And as you say, maybe there'll be many, but we don't also want to create incentive where you just have to create a big dust cloud of doubt and smear someone and then they resign. You know, we have courts for a reason and Mayor Adams deserves his day in court. And he's very clear, you know, from right before the indictment was delivered, before the Justice Department had their press conference, he had a raucous outdoor press conference with his supporters in very New York. There were protesters right. uh, drowning out people, car horns, everything going off. But he made clear he's going to fight. And I think if he feels if he didn't do it, he should. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Bill. Thank you all for listening. It's never a dull moment here in uh, the Naked City. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back every day here on Potomac Watch.